Okay, we are rolling. Champions of Champions Boxing Talk here. Right, well, it's the fight coming up very soon. December 1st, I think. Deontay Wilder v Tyson Fury. What do I think about that fight and how do I think it's going to play out? How do I think it's going to go? Well, this is a very interesting one. I can only tell you a fiction. Now, I know all predictions before the event itself are fictions. But this is the biggest fiction. And I'm going to explain why soon. I can only tell you what I'm going to tell you. And I can only go and improvise with this one. In fact, all my videos are improvised. I don't have a script for any one of them. I just talk from the mind that I have got. Because I believe in freedom of speech. Not being restricted to scripts on paper. Remember that word, freedom of speech. I'm not going to go any further because, you know, there'll probably be strange people looking out for me. You know, the, the way things are these days. The climate of the world. But... This is down to a couple of things. It's not just one or two. It's down to a couple of things. One of the things is, how can anybody with any sense of certainty look me in the eye right now and say, Tyson Fury will be the same. Tyson Fury. V. Deontay Wilder as the Tyson Fury that beat Vladimir Klitschko. Nobody could say that with certainty. So I'm hearing a lot of these boxing channels that are not really making predictions as to who will win this fight and they're getting the public having a go at them for it. Lay off because you don't know either what shape Tyson Fury is in. Yes, he's looking good, but looks can be deceiving. We saw all this with David Hay v Tony Bellew, didn't we? Right? And people say, well, you don't know what you're talking about. You've never boxed. Yes, Virgil Hunter never boxed. He trained world champions. Khan, and one of the best of his era, Andre Ward. Virgil Hunter never boxed. But he knows boxing. Abel Sanchez trained one of the most dominant hev middleweights, sorry, of this era, Gennady Golovkin. Made the most defences of any foreign fighter to ever hold the middleweight title. That's Abel Sanchez. He never boxed. But he knows boxing. Bert Sugar. Historian of the sport. Never boxed. Go look the guy up. He knew boxing. Jose Mourinho of Manchester United, the manager. Unlike Alex Ferguson, never played for a top-flight club. He's now a manager. But he's never played pro at that level. And it's starting to show. No, I'm only joking. But anyway, you, you get the point. I'd know what I'd know if we had Tyson Fury years ago. But even then, I wouldn't know what I know. <laughs> Sounds a contradiction. Deontay Wilder, first of all, if I'm thinking of Tyson Fury, who fought Klitschko. is a different fighter to Klitschko. That is a fact. Klitschko is much more cautious, more of a conservative. He will box on the outside, Klitschko, against the bigger guy. Even if the bigger guy's got the longer range, Klitschko sticks to his style, generally speaking. And that's that. Right? He's a technician, and if the technician side of himself is not working, i.e. if he can't jab the guy, if he doesn't have the right reach, if he is getting frustrated, he seemed in that Tyson Fury fight to still stick to his guns. There was only moments of the 12th round when Klitschko threw pedal to the medal and sold out trying to knock Tyson Fury out. 
Aside from that, you watch Klitschko when he dropped Anthony Joshua. If Anthony Joshua is in front of Mike Tyson, Lennox Lewis, or any of the great finishers, Deontay Wilder even, they would have finished Anthony Joshua off. But Klitschko was still concerned, even though he had Joshua rocked and dropped, right? Never went in for the kill. Now, granted, some Deontay Wilder might not have the technique to land that huge power punch that Klitschko landed on Joshua that dropped him initially. But put a stunned person in front of those guys I've just mentioned, and they're out of there. The stunned guy is gone, signed, sealed, and delivered, knocked out. Or bare minimum, if he survives, he'll have suffered a big onslaught. No doubt about it. Klitschko is too based on precision. So Tyson Fury, as long as he had the measure, was never going to face massive amounts of pressure in terms of attacks v Klitschko that night. Tyson Fury knew it. He knew, you could tell that he felt that oh, there's a good chance, style-wise, I've got this guy's number. Klitschko was used to years to fighting smaller guys than himself, being able to jab and hold, hit with power punches, work his technicianship, his footwork, but he was always the bigger, stronger guy. When he met Tyson Fury, that changed. Evander Holyfield would have tried to get on the inside of Tyson Fury and work that body. But Klitschko clinched the bigger man when they were up close. Because, no matter what, everybody's got a plan till they get hit and hurt, right? Tyson Fury clipped Klitschko. And Klitschko went back to type throughout the whole fight. Tried to fight the way Klitschko fights. Now, the way Klitschko fights is the wrong style to beat Tyson Fury. Klitschko, in the annals of the heavyweight division, will go down a better fighter than Tyson Fury. He's just achieved so much more when you stack up their records. But stylistically, and the fact that Klitschko was getting on a bit in age. But stylistically, I remember, I didn't predict Tyson Fury to beat Klitschko. I thought Klitschko would win. I've got a friend called Billy Bostock, right? He told me Tyson Fury's feet will negate Klitschko from attacking. Klitschko won't attack anyway because he's a conservative. And Tyson Fury's reflexes will give Klitschko problems. Nobody else in my household saw that but him. And he could see it for months. And that's exactly what happened. Right? Let's swing to Deontay Wilder. You're dealing with Deontay Wilder who, although the names on paper are not superstars... He's used to fighting heavier men than him. All right, he's tall, but he's very lean and light. So he's used to fighting bigger guys than himself. He's not a conservative. Oh, no. Deontay Wilder has no problem selling out. So when Tyson Fury is on the ropes posing against Klitschko, he has no worries whatsoever that Klitschko is going to come in with something reckless, and hit the jackpot. He cannot do that, no matter what version of Tyson Fury is in the ring on December 1st. He cannot ill afford to do that v Deontay Wilder. As I said, Deontay Wilder will throw power shots from angles that haven't been invented, if there's a hope of it landing, with wrist punches. Taking a hit if he has to, Right? If you offer Tyson Fury a two for one deal, I hit, or I should say, you offer Deontay Wilder a two for one deal. Fury hits you twice and you hit him once. 
He will take it. He will take it right now. Because Deontay Wilder only needs moments to win this fight. Tyson Fury needs to be nearly perfect. Unless, unless Tyson Fury's chin is brilliant and granite. And that is expecting a lot <laughs> with the way Deontay Wilder hits. Yes, he may lack fundamentals. He may not do things that the textile boxer does. But it's successful so far what he does. That's the point. And people say Tyson Fury will go in the first four or five rounds with the boxing skills and footwork and hand speed and all of that stuff. Ring craft. He will go rounds ahead of Deontay Wilder. Deontay Wilder is used to being down on scorecards for long periods in fights. That is not the thing that will make him panic. That is not the thing that will make Deontay Wilder panic. He, in another way, will just stick to what he does. Believing. Because Deontay Wilder's game is based off belief. The belief that he can with his style. He is quick, right? He is unorthodox. When I say that, I don't mean southpaw. I don't mean left and right hand. I mean what he does can set a boxer off potentially. And he will throw till the end. I believe that, that Deontay Wilder will throw until the end. Look at the Ortiz fight. He was heavily buzzed in that fight, Deontay Wilder. And I do think there was something fishy going on with that doctor. The doctor should not have been up there. There was no cut, but it gave Deontay Wilder time to recover after taking some hellacious stuff from Luis Ortiz. Here's an avenue for Tyson Fury. Deontay Wilder come back in the fight, kept faith with his knockout power, landed. Right? Landed. Landed some left hooks in there as well. For people that say he's not a varied puncher, there was some devastating rights. There was a left hook or two in there as well. So don't forget that. But of course, he was struggling because, again, when you're not a fundamentalist, when you don't have fundamentals in boxing, the southpaw stance can really give you issues. And Luis Ortiz was giving Deontay Wilder issues. Here's a chance for a prime Tyson Fury who can switch from orthodox to southpaw. He's got Freddie Roach in the corner now. Tyson Fury has a boxing brain anyway. He could use elements of the southpaw stance to confuse Deontay Wilder. But of course, even then, Deontay Wilder's power got through V. Luis Ortiz, didn't it? And I'm sure Deontay Wilder is of the mind that the bigger the target, the better. There was less of Luis Ortiz to hit than there's going to be of Tyson Fury. And again, Deontay Wilder won't be bothered about finding the perfect punch. If there are only arms in the way, he'll hit them. Again, he's not Klitschko. Right? The subtlety of the way he moves his body as well. He is athletic, right? Sometimes, if your boxing brain cannot correspond to your physical body and you don't have the reflexes to get out of the way, a thinking boxer can be knocked out by someone with the reflexes of Deontay Wilder. That is where the last two and a half years are a question for Tyson Fury. If his reflexes have dimmed any at all, he's moments away from getting knocked out in this fight. The last two fights Tyson Fury's has had don't tell us much. They were just about getting him back in fighting shape and fighting fitness. 
Now comes the acid test. And it's a physical test. It's not a fundamental test. It's not so much a cat and mouse, a game of cards or chess we're going to see here. Because Deontay Wilder is not coming to do that, right? He's doing the very thing that Tyson Fury, there's a question mark about him right now. And that's what happens when somebody fights at a high pace for a guy that's abused himself over two years. When you're constantly facing a guy that's throwing punches, right? Power punches. When a shark is literally near your chest, how do you hold out? As a boxer, you can go 20 rounds if it's fought at your own pace. That does not tell you really how fit the athlete is. So the 10 rounds Tyson Fury had was all at his own pace. Be interesting if Deontay Wilder can make Tyson Fury fight at his pace. We will see then how fit and how sharp this current Tyson Fury is. The speed of Deontay Wilder's feet, I'm not always going to say he's got great footwork because that's all to do with positioning and angles. We all know that. There's a difference between foot speed and how good footwork can be sometimes. Some boxers stand very stationary but move in ways that make you believe their feet are faster than they are. Mikey Garcia is one of those. But we know Deontay Wilder being the athlete does have fast feet. Tyson Fury has fast feet, but this is more based on placement. If Deontay Wilder cuts the ring off, Tyson Fury, right, is a boxer that solves puzzles when he's at his best. But you know when you're unfit and you've lived unhealthy, you don't even think as clever as when you fit sharp and strong. And the Tyson Fury that fought Klitschko, everything fell into place. He was winning the politics of the press conferences. He got his way in Germany when the sponge was took out the ring. Then, of course, the fight. Psychologically, he had Klitschko. Klitschko had never been pulled out of his comfort zone like that before in his career, ever. The nearest was David Hay, but David Hay, style-wise, did not have the size, the reach, or any of the tools Tyson Fury had to keep Klitschko away. In fact, Hay had to go to Klitschko to do something, and Klitschko could do his usual style to defeat David Hay. Right? Fury had it all ticked. I don't think he's gotten to Deontay Wilder as much as the British public like to think. I don't think Deontay Wilder is that phased. He keeps saying that Deontay Wilder needs to be an alter ego to make himself feel comfortable. I.e. the bronze bomber. Does Tyson Fury not think that calling himself the Gypsy King is his version of that? And in one of the BT interviews or face-to-face, -face, the face-off session they had, when Deontay Wilder brought up religion, Tyson Fury was responding differently. He looked shook. When... You're dealing with a man that doesn't know where he's at right now in Tyson Fury. But Deontay Wilder firmly knows where he's at. He knows that power has worked for him more or less every time against every opponent he's ever faced. So there is no lack of belief there. Here's where it could get interesting. 
If Tyson Fury is able to make him miss, 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 and then some, and counter Deontay Wilder, offset his whirlwind rhythm, right? And then, if Deontay Wilder for moments in clinches feels the strength of Tyson Fury, if Tyson Fury, because again he is the bigger man, can lean, zap some of the energy out of Deontay Wilder, let him know that he's the alpha male in the ring, that may have a pivotal role in this fight. If Tyson Fury is able to hurt Deontay Wilder, get his respect, because he's going to need to, because this man is coming. Breakthrough, potentially, for Tyson Fury. If Tyson Fury can make Deontay Wilder feel strength like he's never felt strength before, Make Deontay Wilder miss like he's never missed before. Make Deontay Wilder's shots be blocked like they've never been blocked before. To make Deontay Wilder feel like he's on a hiding to nothing, chasing a rabbit which he cannot catch and being hit in the process. If he can do all of them things and then push Deontay Wilder right to the centre of that ring where there's height, reach, and distance. Tyson Fury then is ticking a lot of boxes because on the outside, Tyson Fury can outbox him. If Tyson Fury can really, and it's gonna, this is going to make it the case during the opening bell, never mind what's said, never mind that, because Deontay Wilder believes he's unbeatable. And his punch would take down Godzilla. Tyson Fury makes Deontay Wilder from the very first bell believe that he's facing a level of opponent that he's never faced before. Bingo. Go back to Juan Manuel Marquez's fight with Floyd Mayweather. Marquez did not believe that there was a single fighter on planet Earth that he couldn't land power punches on regularly. From the very first bell, he learned there was one, and that was Mayweather. Once he got that respect, I could see Marquez's face like, whoa, this is much more difficult than was advertised. By round two, he was dropped. By round three, Marquez, Floyd Mayweather, had earned Marquez's respect big time. Not saying Marquez did not think Floyd Mayweather was a good fighter. He just didn't believe it was like this. The press conferences did nothing to Marquez. Water off a duck's back. But those opening three minutes did. Psychologically, those opening three minutes were pivotal. Marquez, the guy that was used to landing everything, became the man that was landing little. What I'm trying to say is, Although Marquez and Deontay Wilder are completely different styles, one is very much a formidable thinking counter-puncher. The other is a whirlwind on steroids. But if that whirlwind is just having no success whatsoever, and having to pay for it, and feeling the strength of a bigger guy that is using it at that, better than any opponent he's faced before, then... We have to see what Deontay Wilder is really made of. The thing is, we're dealing with a heavyweight division. And Floyd Mayweather could take a clean punch the odd time from Marquez. Smaller guys. 
every second of every minute of every round, Tyson Fury has to be game. He can't switch off. He can't think I've got this in the bag. One punch changes it all. One punch knocks the building down. Big style. Think Tony Bellew v Usage. He was in the fight, wasn't he? But there's a funny thing. When you're defending against non-punchers, or I should say punchers that are not that concussive, it kind of is less energy zapping. Because there is not that much emotional fear and concentration needed to avoid it. When you're constantly avoiding a deadly fighter, it can catch up to you. The emotion drains you. The fear may drain you. Tony Bellew, that's exactly what happened to him. He was on eggshells all the way through the fight because he knew no matter how well he was doing, all Usic needed was the right combination. And the fight is changed. In fact, the fight was over. Again, Usic, more measured. Different stance to Deontay Wilder, Southpaw. But you get the point. And that's usage power. Deontay Wilder can stagger you of hitting you with a shot that he has not even sat down on. That he has not even planted right. That he has just clipped you with. Grazed you with. So you're talking about the need for perfection. Well, basically, this fight is this. Can one man be perfect? And can one other man find the moment? Deontay Wilder, it's about finding the moment. He does not want to be paid for overtime. Tyson Fury does not mind overtime as long as he can do his job perfectly. But he's got to do it perfectly. And no doubt the Tyson Fury of years ago, against Klitschko, he's fighting a different style, yes. But that Tyson Fury has the best chance. Wilder just needs to be Wilder. Because he can't reinvent the wheel right now. He's 33. I don't think he can learn new jinx to his armour, new, put new strings to his bow. I think the Deontay Wilder we have right now is set in stone. You can't always teach an old dog new tricks. So, will Tyson Fury be at his best? You're thinking, what do I think? I don't know. How can anyone know? I've already said this. I'd be lying to you right now if I thought that Wilder's team did not think there was an opportunity here. Just maybe the best reflexes of Tyson Fury can't get away from that whirlwind because when you fight, you know, your typical textbooks boxer you can kind of gauge where their punches are going to come from even if they're technically better than a wilder but with wilder it could come from anywhere is he prepared for that even at his best maybe maybe not and if he's not at his best and he beats Deontay Wilder what does that say about Deontay Wilder is it a heavyweight that is not as great as he was made out to be? Or is Tyson Fury this great fighter that many people think he is? Either way, both, man, both men have to do the job right here. Because Tyson Fury has two real good wins on that resume. His resume is overrated. And so... Is Deontay Wilder's. Deontay Wilder's resume is even more overrated. He's only really beat. In terms of world class status. Luis Ortiz. And we don't really even know how old Ortiz is. Right? 
Tyson Fury has Derek Jazora. Okay. Tough guy. Beaten twice. And Klitschko. We're giving him credit because he did it in Germany. Aside from that, both these guys have still a lot to prove. This is not Ali Frazier 2 or 3. These guys are still... The history of their careers is still being written. It's not like Adrian Broner and Manny Pacquiao, where you know where Manny Pacquiao lies in the history of the sport. These guys, the deal is not sealed yet. If Deontay Wilder wins, he's still going to have to go on because people will always say, you beat the shadow of Tyson Fury. A man that was just not ready yet after going back to boxing, after abusing himself for two years. And if Tyson Fury wins, well... Tyson Fury, Tyson Fury people will say Wilder was not the fighter he real, that we, he was made out to be. But then people will say, well, Tyson Fury only exposed a guy who, in terms of boxing, is not fundamentally very sound anyway. And when he stepped up at, you know, at a higher level, he got exposed. Interesting. That this, for the first time, I will give a, shall we say, an emergency prediction. One that is kind of forced on me, but I don't really believe, because I don't really know. And that is, this is not a prediction, by the way. This is somebody with a gun to my head, who is seconds away from pulling that Trigger. And I'm struggling to come to terms with it right now. Will Tyson Fury be able to confuse Deontay Wilder to beat him? And will Deontay Wilder be able to land that power to bother Tyson Fury? There's a gun to my head right now. I'm in mortal danger. I have to answer an answer I don't know. This is all hypothetical we all get it wrong sometimes, but there's more of an excuse to get this wrong than any prediction before. Right? Who is it? I'm going for simplicity. I'm really just going to go for the sound bites of boxing, shall we say. Or a sound bite. A cliche. A good boxer always beats a good fighter. There you go. Please don't shoot me in the head. So what does that mean? I'm indulging. The emergency prediction is, the forced prediction is that I don't believe in whatsoever. And I have no faith. I think that if someone is going to shoot me in the head right now, I'm going to say Tyson Fury is the better boxer and will find a way to negate the tougher fighter. And win. Via points. Clear points. But I don't believe that one bit. But I can't say any other. That's all I've got to say. That's all I can say. I don't know what Tyson Fury is anymore. And I don't know what level Deontay Wilder is. Yet. So I'm looking at Deontay Wilder. Very good fighter. I'm looking at Tyson Fury, very good boxer, and I'm thinking down the years, you know, a good seven times out of ten, a very good boxer has managed to find the answer to a very good fighter and win. So that is just an emergency prediction. If you now say you disagree, I disagree because I don't know. I disagree with myself in this this is one of the most awkward predictions I've ever seen people have to make we literally it's not like like Mayweather has been away from boxing for a few years now 
There are fighters I'd pick Mayweather to beat, but you have to understand Mayweather has not been, you know, drinking alcohol, bloating up to God knows what weight, suffering real terrible bouts of depression where he can't go outside and meet the public. <sighs> you know, Tyson Fury actually said he ran a couple of yards up the road and had to stop. This is one of the premier athletes of the world saying this. So how am I supposed to say that 100% certain that he is going to be the great, huge, moving athlete, because he is tremendously fast for his size, that he used to be? Yes, he looked, he looked quite fast against those other two guys, but they are not wilder. So... I'm stuck between a rock and a hard plate on this. And I think everybody is. Anybody that tells you they know what's going what's gonna to happen December 1st is lying. That's what makes it actually exciting, maybe. To see how Tyson Fury copes with a bigger level opponent after what he's been through. If he wins it, to him personally, some demons... I hope we'll start to leave him. On to Freddie Roach. This guy's been around a long time. Freddie Roach will be looking at Deontay Wilder and thinking he's not Mayweather. <laughs> Where having to land punches are concerned. He will be, I think, massive in the corner for Tyson Fury. Massive. The confidence he will get from Freddie Roach. Think about it. You're a footballer kicking a ball around. And Alex Ferguson. Sir Alex Ferguson is there supporting you. His word is stronger than most. And so is Freddie Roach. Freddie Roach could tell him in seconds looking at videos how he hits Deontay Wilder and how he hits him true. He's seen it all. And he's found ways to teach his students to hit better fighters than Deontay Wilder and beat them. So it is a boost. He's changed corners, but I think this is a good move. You can't... Knowledge is priceless. No matter how good you are, no matter how physically tough you are, no matter how good your boxing IQ is, some people have just seen more. And if they can pass it on to you, it's vital, that knowledge. Right? Roach will also know because he did train a fading Mike Tyson. Roach will know himself whether Tyson Fury is up to this or not. So, we've gone through a lot. The whirlwind v. the boxer. Is it as simple as that? Or are we going to see something we've never really believed? Which is Deontay Wilder will show us that he can box much better. Remember, he used a very good jab v. Stavern in that first fight. Outboxed Stavern. Tyson Fury is another level, I know. But will Deontay Wilder show us that he's not just about coming forward in strange angles throwing whirlwind punches using athleticism and fast feet and hands? Will he actually surprise us and set something up? Use a jab. Will Tyson Fury show us that if the fight goes to the trenches, he's much tougher and durable than we believe? And that he has this in the locker, if need be. We're going to find out just days from now. So all I could say is, I don't know who's going to win. I've given you an answer because a gun was put to my head and I said the boxer beats the fighter. But these are very strange circumstances indeed. I've been talking now for nearly 40 minutes. This is a huge video. 
If you've got patience, listen. It's going to be worth it. This is Champions of Champions Boxing Talk. I'm out. <laughs>